I have the total in sales for each employee that they made from January through April, and I want to take that total and use the lookup function to look up that value down below in the mini table. Now, for the lookup, it's going to always be a mini table with the one row to look it up and compare against and the one row to return it. Or it could be columns. In other words, I can go ahead and take this and flip it and transpose it and have two columns. So I'm going to keep it as is and say, okay, take this value by using the lookup function and compare it within this range, known as the vector range. And then when it finds out that, okay, it's 500 but less than 800, it's going to return the value in the same position in the adjacent row, or if it was, you know, two columns, in the adjacent column. So when it looks at this and it says, okay, it's 500 but less than 800 in the next adjacent uh, row, it's going to say it's silver. If it's 800 but less than 1,000 gold, if it's 1,000 or more, it's going to be diamond. So let's go ahead and hit equals on the keyboard and type in the first couple letters for look. There we go. You can see in the pop-up it says looks up a value either from a one row or one column range or from an array. In other words, you get two options. Let me show you. With the function selected, go ahead and hit the tab key on the keyboard to pop it open. Hey, and you've got two to choose from. You can use the vector function or the array. Now we're going to focus on the vector because the array, Microsoft recommends to not use that but to use the vertical lookup or horizontal lookup instead because this form of lookup, the array, is provided for compatibility with other spreadsheet programs. So let's go ahead and keep it simple and just focus on the first one here. And to do that, we're just going to go ahead and ignore the one down below. So what's the first argument in the syntax? It says, okay, what's the lookup value? You can either type it in and type in 562.01 or select the cell that contains the value and then hit the comma key on the keyboard so we can advance to the next argument, and it's the lookup vector or range. So we want to take this and look it up in that range, and then after it takes that value and looks in that range, and it says, okay, we found out that it's equal to or more than 500 but less than 800, let's go to the next range by hitting the comma so we can go to the result vector, and the results is going to be this range for silver, so let's hit enter, and there you go. Let's go ahead and quickly copy and paste this down below so we can call it a day and not have to retype it in for each one. So select the cell that contains the function, hover over the lower right hand corner till you get the black cross to click and drag and copy that function down and okay, what's the deal? Go ahead and select any one of these and double click on it and you can see by the selection as far as being relative, the first part of the function is correct. We want to go from instead of staying in H8, the one above, we want to advance to the next row 9. So that works, but the problem with the other parts of the uh, function is that they're advancing down one by one as well. So instead of staying up here for the lookup vector, it's down below two rows and also the result vector. So when we copy and paste it down, it keeps moving down and we want it to stay to always be the same range. The only thing we don't want to stay is the uh, lookup value. So let's go ahead and hit the escape key. And all this can be found or learned in my absolute value training video. So you want to watch that in case if you don't know what I'm talking about. So go ahead and double click on the first function that we got right and say, okay, when we copy and paste this to adjacent cells, then make sure that this range, you can see it's in red, stays. It doesn't advance down when we go down row by row when we copy and paste. So for I13, hit the F4 key on the keyboard to add the dollar signs, the absolute values in front of the I and the 13. For the I to say, stay in the same column. For the row 13, stay in the same row. Let's do it for K13, F4. And then also for the result vector, F4, to add the dollar signs, and K14 to add the dollar signs. Of course, you don't have to use F4. You can actually type in the dollar sign in front of the column reference and the row, but hey, F4 is just faster for me. Hit Enter. Let's go ahead and try this again. Hover over the lower right hand corner and double click really fast and hey, it works. Double click on any one of these to make sure that it's still referencing the same row when it's looking up the value to compare against for the lookup vector and also the result. And we get accurate results. Now let's see what happens when I change this. I know it's got the formula up here, but if I go ahead and override it and type in a thousand and hit enter, there we go, diamond. Or I can undo that, just update the values for March and type in 10,000, hit enter, and it updates there, which in turn updates the level. The lookup function says they're in the diamond. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.